Hi everyone, I'm just going to quickly show how to sh to have an angled constraint. Um, so I'm in my, I've uh, sketched a line in this plane, um, a thousand millimetres long, that's going to be my beam from on the x-axis here. And so we want a 45 degree angle constraint. So the way I can do that is I can draw a sketch on this plane um, and reference off this line, references, close, sketch the line, it'll snap on the end, come up the angle that we need. I'm going to do it at 45 and that's just going to be a, a line I can reference to now. So if I select on that line and I hit coordinate system, sorry, if I select that point and I hit coordinate system, I can set up a new coordinate system here, go to orientation and I can select a reference for my X um, axis and I can select that line. And then I can have it running down or I'm gonna flip it so it's, uh, it's the X is going up. Um, for the Y axis, I'm gonna um, select that, uh, no, I might make that Z. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that Y going up and rotation is going to be about the Z. Okay, so I've got a now an extra coordinate system. So when I go into simulate, application simulate, I can apply a beam to that and um, I'll just redo um, the things I was doing there. Remove some of this stuff. All right, so I've um, I've gone into beam idealization and I've set up this beam. Um, I came in here, beam section, and I made it 100 by 100 by 88 by 88. So that's a six mil wall. Um, the orientation is default and we don't need beam release because it's just a single element. I can put in some constraints. So I'll go to these points. So say I've got a a pin constraint here. So there's the X, Y, and Z translation is fixed and the rotation in the Z is going to be free. And so I'm going to fix the X and the Y so that we don't have sideways um, rotations and weird things happening. I can do the same thing on this side. I can go displacement, select the point, select this point, um, I can say I want the X along this line to be free. So I'm going to go into coordinate system and select my new system called CS0. You can rename those. I'm going to put the X to be free. Is that free? Yes, Y and Z is going to be fixed so it's only can move on that line and I might just leave all the rotations free. That's fine. Okay, now I can apply a load, a force uh, along this edge. Let's just make it really large, like 5,000 in the Y. Okay, whoops, select the line, preview, yep. So we've got minus 5,000 Newtons and make sure we select materials, steel, material assignment is going to be to the entire component called beam part. Yes. And then we can save it. Right, let's do an analysis. So get rid of a previous, a new analysis. Um, just run it as default. Start the run. I always run the diagnostic because it helps me with warnings. It's done. Play the results. I like to display one of the pictures deformed and it shows me the beam. And we've got a maximum of 10 MPA. You can see this kind of jagged action here. And that's something we can change by running with more steps. Um, 
and we can look up where the model min and max are. They would make a good screenshot there. Uh, somebody asked for um, uh, shear. I think it was shear. So if I look up shear in here, do, 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 we have got under graph. We can have shear and moment. Uh, we can check and uncheck these. I'll give you an idea. Oops, relative to curve arc length, beam, curve, that curve. And the OK is right up there. OK. You can toggle the start point. We'll start from the OK. OK and show. And it'll show you for, as uh, X across the bottom axis with your different uh, diagrams. Okay, hope that helps you with your angular constraints.